Okay, this video is going to be part six of the trigonometric integral series, but uh, in the first five videos we looked at sine and cosine. This will be the first of the videos where we look at secant and tangent. Now the form will be something like this, the integral of the secant raised to a power times the tangent raised to a power, and there will be a lot of variations off this. And the rules will be similar to what you use for sine and cosine. You might remember if you had a sine one, remember you saved a sine factor, or if you had a cosine when you saved a cosine factor. So if you need to, definitely watch the first five videos to show you how to handle sine and cosine. But now we're going to work with secant and tangent. And in this video, we'll look at the first option here. So if the power of the secant is even, in other words, if this is to an even power right here, then what you do is save a secant squared factor and convert the remaining factors to tangent. And we'll do an example to show um, why you would want to do this. Okay, now before we do the problem note, you'll need a couple more identities and derivatives. So last time we worked with things like sine squared was 1 minus the cosine squared. This time it'll all be in terms of secant and tangent. So again, a reminder from your trig days, the secant squared is 1 minus the tangent squared, or 1 plus the tangent squared, and the tangent squared is the secant squared minus 1. So you'll need these two identities. Now you're also going to need derivatives, so again just a reminder, the derivative of the secant is the secant tangent, and the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared. So both these are going to be important in what we're going to do here. So let's take a look at an example now, and we'll work one um, where we have a secant to the sixth times a tangent to the fifth. Now, again, the secant is to an even power, so let's look back at the rules. And what the rules suggest is, if the secant is to an even power, then save a secant squared factor off the side and change everything else to tangent. So let's look at how we would do that in this problem. Okay, so what we're going to do is this. It's the same process that we use in the sine and the cosine. The idea is you've got six secants. You're going to take two of them and move them from here. Uh, we'll scoot them from here over to here and isolate them off by themselves. So when you do that, this is what it's going to look like. You look, the problem will change into the integral. Now you had the secant to the sixth. When you move two of them off, you'll be left with the secant to the fourth of 2x. Now you've still got this tangent to the fifth of 2x. We'll take care of that a little bit later on. And then again, you, you take secant squared, break it off, and you just move two of the secants over here. So you've got a secant squared of 2x dx. Now, the question is, why would you want to do that? And let's just come back and we'll kind of put a little box around this one. Uh, so you've got a secant squared right here. So why break this secant squared off and move it up here? Because what you're going to do next is this. You're going to go inside here and change all of this into the tangent. Then just a reminder on your derivatives. Um, the derivative of the tangent will get you to the secant squared, so you can use that secant squared in the u substitution. So that's why you want to have a secant squared all by itself on the right-hand side. So anyway, now back to the problem. Now we're still going to do a couple of other things here. They'll be very similar to what we did in that last video series on sine and cosine. And the first thing looks like this. Uh, you've got to change this secant into a tangent so that everything here is tangent. But you don't have a formula for the secant to the fourth, but you do have a formula for secant squared. So the next step is to do this. Change this secant to the fourth into secant squared of 2x. The whole thing squared. So you've still got a secant to the fourth, it's just squared squared. Then you've got the tangent to the fifth of 2x, and you've still got this secant squared of 2x, all dx. Now the reason you did that is because you can take this thing right here and use an identity to change it into a tangent. So what the identities would look like, just to remind you again, um, <laughs> The secant squared is equal to 1 plus the tangent squared. So we'll take advantage of that right here. This is going to become the integral. And in place of this, we'll put 1 plus the tangent squared of 2x. And the whole thing is squared. Now the reason you're doing this, you want to change everything in the front here into a tangent. 
Now you've still got this tangent to the fifth of 2x, and here's the secant squared that you're going to take care of when you do the u substitution, all dx. Okay, the next thing you've got to do, you have to recognize that this is 1 plus the tangent squared squared. So you're going to have to take this part right here and foil it. So you've got to do a foil on this one. So what this is, it's like having 1 plus the tangent squared times 1 plus the tangent squared. So when you do that, this will turn into, again, foil this part on the inside. So when you foil this, you'll have the first part will be 1, and you've got plus the tangent plus the tangent, which would be plus 2 times the tangent squared. Then finally at the end, you've got uh, tangent squared times tangent squared, which would be plus the tangent to the fourth of 2x. And then you need to put parentheses around all this. So when you foil this thing, it turns in. So foiling this turns into this. Now you still got this tangent to the fifth. So you got a tangent to the fifth of 2x. And you've still got this secant squared uh, of 2x and then a dx right here. Okay, next step, and again, quite a bit of algebra in all this. We'll scoop this down just a little bit. So the next step now is to do this. Take this tangent to the fifth and distribute it through this everything in the parentheses here. So multiply times this, times this, and times this. So what that's going to give you would be the integral. Now 1 times the tangent to the fifth would give you the tangent to the fifth of 2x. And you've got a plus 2. Now here you're going to add the exponent. You've got a tangent squared and a tangent to the fifth. Add the exponents and you'd get a tangent to the seventh of 2x. And then finally you've got a plus. And again, add the exponents. 4 plus 5, this would give you a tangent to the ninth of 2x. Then all this is in parentheses. And the whole thing is now times the secant squared of 2x dx. <clears throat> now this nice little step, you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to help you see why the u substitution works out the way it does. I'm going to take each one of these and put them inside parentheses. So this one I'm going to write as the tangent of 2x to the fifth power plus 2 times the tangent of 2x to the seventh power plus the tangent of 2x, now it's to the ninth power, uh, then parentheses around all this, and then here's the secant squared of 2x. Now again, you don't really have to do that, but I do it just to kind of show you where the u substitution comes in. Now what we've got to do is this. Uh, we're going to let u be equal to uh, the tangent of 2x, but it shows up there, and there, and there. So it actually shows up three places. Now the reason you want to pick this, the derivative of the tangent will get you to the secant squared, so we'll use u substitution to finish this thing up. So let's scoot it down here just a little bit. Now let's go ahead and do the u substitution. So we'll let u be equal to the tangent of 2x. So what that means is the derivative of u with respect to x. Now the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared of 2x. But remember, that's something more than just a simple x. You have to take the derivative of what's on the inside, which would be times 2. Now let's rewrite it. That means that du, now I'll take the 2 and move it out in front. So I've got 2 times the secant squared of 2x. And you've got a dx right here. Again, I'm going to trade it for this part right here, this typical u substitution. I need a secant squared dx, and I've got it. I don't need the 2 here, so I'll move this 2 to the other side. So that gives me a 1 half du would be equal to secant squared of 2x dx. Now again, this is what I'm going to trade out. So that part there matches up with this. 
So my U substitution will be that right there. I'll swap it out for a one half DU. Okay, so we scoot things up just a little bit here. And let's continue on. Now we'll change everything in terms of U. So this will become the integral of, and rather than um, tangent to the fifth, now I've got U to the fifth plus two and replace this with u to the seventh and then finally u to the ninth and all of this times and replace the secant squared with a one half du so i've got a one half du right here okay next up go ahead and bring this one half out to the front so this would be one half of the integral of u to the fifth plus 2u to the seventh plus u to the ninth d. All right, we'll go ahead and find the antiderivatives of those. So that would be one half of, this will turn into u to the six divided by six plus twice u to the eight divided by eight. And then finally plus um, u to the tenth <laughs> divided by ten, and then tack on a plus c at the end of all that. And really, you're almost finished. <clears throat> the next step now is to go ahead and make this be, uh, we'll distribute this one half, and we'll change each one of these u's back into what they're equal to. So just a reminder, u is equal to the tangent of 2x. So in the final answer, this will be, <clears throat> um, distribute the one half, this would be 1 12th, of u to the sixth, but u is the tangent of 2x. Now this thing to the sixth power. Then you've got plus. Now here the twos will cancel out and leave you with one eighth of, and this would be the tangent of 2x, this time to the eighth power. And then finally, you've got plus um, one half times one tenth would give you one twentieth of u to the tenth power. But again, u is the tangent of 2x all raised to the tenth power, and then add on the plus c. So the final solution looks like uh, this right here. <clears throat> now, real quickly, let's go back up and take one last look at it from the beginning. <coughs> Okay, you started with uh, secant to the sixth. <clears throat> and the first thing you did was go ahead and break out a secant squared. So you came and took a secant squared and moved it over here. Now the reason you did that is because that's going to take care of the substitution. Then the next thing, change the secant to the fourth into the secant squared squared. And the reason you did that is you've got a formula for secant squared. You can replace it with this. Then uh, you've got it all in terms of tangent now. So you foil it out, you distribute the tangent to the fifth, <clears throat> and that gets everything now in terms of tangent. So you can let u be equal to the tangent of 2x, and it shows up three places. Just do a u substitution at the end of the problem, um, plug the x's back in, and you've got it. So there is a sample of a problem <clears throat> where you had the secant to an even power and you use the rule of breaking out a secant squared. So let's go back to the very beginning. You use this rule right here. If the power of the secant was even, save a secant squared and change the remaining factors to tangent. Now in the next video, we'll look at a problem similar to this, but it will be approached completely differently.